Tonight, I'm going to speak about transformation. All right, what is transformation? Transformation is a marked change as in appearance or character, usually for the better. Let's turn to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Is anybody there? There? Yep. All right. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Amen. We humans have a sinful nature. Uh, we sin, we break the Ten Commandments, we fall for temptations. We must seek God. Um, repent, and he will, he will uh, purify us. I'm going to turn to 1 John chapter 1, <clears throat> verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. God can transform us. Only he can do that. No one and nothing else can. Amen. When you give your life to Christ at the altar and, and, uh, and you are washed clean, you made a commitment with God that you will serve him forever. That means try your best. Try, to, try your best to be like him. Um, we all know what is right and what is wrong, what we can do and what is, you know, what is sinful. Now, when you accept Christ, don't, accept, don't expect your life to be transformed in a second. You know, if you're, <coughs> if you're it's a constant battle pretty much all, for the rest of your life. Um, it's a job that you must keep up with. God forgives us for our sins, but we need to work on our lives daily. For example, if you are like a, a criminal or if you're, you know, into drugs or something, and uh, you can't just be transformed into a pastor overnight, that's not going to happen. You've got to seek God. You've got to meditate. You've got to read the, read the Bible every day. You've got you to want to know God more. Um, the Holy Spirit will warn you when something is wrong and when it's right. You will know when you're in the presence of something something's good. Um, for the rest of our lives, we will have ups and downs and temptations, but we become more knowledgeable, and the Holy Spirit helps us and talks to us. Through Christ and faith, we learn to live holy lives. Um, in the book of Acts and Samuel, <clears throat> it speaks about a man called Saul. He was a murderer, and God transformed him completely into a preacher and even gave him a new identity. He became Paul the Apostle. <clears throat> Let's turn to Acts chapter 8, verse 3. It reads the following. Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. Further on, when you read in, about this in Acts, uh, it says, <clears throat> as he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from the heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground, and the voice spoke to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, asked Saul. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Saul got up from the, from the ground, and when he opened his eyes, he was blind. He was blind for three days. Now, to paraphrase the story, um, in Damascus there was a prophet, and he was told by God to go to Saul. So later on, the prophet restores Saul's sight. Um, in Acts 9:18, it says, "Immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized." That was Saul's transformation. In the same way, God can transform us. You just have to allow him to. You have to want to change. A lot of times I see people uh, in church ex accept Christ um, into their lives. But when they're alone again or in school or with their friends, they're doing what they did before. They're into sin. They're you know, smoking pot again. They're, they're doing just stupid stuff again. And that's bad. I mean... Uh, it's hard to stay pure, but you got to see God. In order to, um, to, stay, to stay faithful, you got to see God every day. Read the Word every day. See God. Listen to worship. Meditate in the Word. Um, 
you must do this in order to get to the kingdom of God. Um, you might need to change your friends, your surroundings. Um, stop hanging out with your bad friends. If they're, if they're not bringing you up, then they're bringing you down. Um, hang out with godly people. They're going to lift you up. They're going to help you. Um, they're going to strengthen you. You must surround yourself with godly people that are firm in faith. They will lift you up, bring you closer to God. Ever since I accepted Christ, I dropped my bad friends, and because they were, they were, uh, they were messing me up, they, were, they kept me away from experiencing the transformation, to experience the full transformation, you know. It's really tough when you got bad friends that are, keep on nagging and, you know, bringing you in bad places, and it's just tough. It's tough. Um, and last scripture, in Acts 9, verse 20, so Saul stayed with them, with the disciples. Um, Saul stayed, he started hanging out with the disciples. Basically, um, he surrounded himself with these disciples, with these godly people, to, to change his life, you know, to help him out. Saul went through such a transformation from being a murderer of, of Christians to preaching, to preaching Christ. So anything is possible with Christ. All of us can be transformed. No matter what you're going through, if you've got some addictions, some, some problems, God is the only answer. He truly is, and he's the only happiness. That's, that's it. I mean, there's nothing else that's going to help you.